to Greg. No. Um. <laughs> to whomever it may concern. No, that's way too harsh. Um. Hello, my name is Amin Rousseau. I'm a master's student here at Oxford Brookes University studying international management and international relations. And I also work with the Center for Academic Development. This video is going to be about email etiquette. Now, emailing might seem straightforward, but in a university context, there are some solid tips on how to get the tone across and how to make sure the staff can help you as best as they can. Tip number one. Look for the answers before you email. Before you write your email, it is worth looking to see if you can find your answers online. For example, if you're looking to inquire about uh, details for your class, uh, you might be able to find it on your Google Calendar. Or if you're looking for information on your uh, module, you'll be able to find it on your Moodle. For some queries, you might not know who to contact, but we've included a useful guide linked underneath this video um, that will be able to point you in the right direction. Tip number two, always email from your student email address. You are far less likely to get a reply to your email if you're emailing from uh, something like beanslover99 at yahoo.com. Always email from your student email address, which remember, it will always be your student number at brooks.ac.uk. That's your student number at brooks.ac.uk. Tip number three, be clear what you're writing about. When writing an email, make sure to summarize your email in the subject line and give the detail in the main body of text. Let's take a look at an example. I need an appointment. There are a few problems with this one. There's nothing in the subject line, which is never good and can make people suspicious about even opening the thing. And the lack of greeting makes it sound quite aggressive. Even a hi would have helped. But if you're emailing a member of staff, it's probably better to use their title. So for example, dear Professor Hussain. Though if they've emailed you and used your first name, it's generally okay to use their first name back. But broadly, I would say the advice is to stay quite formal. The biggest problem with this email though is there simply isn't enough information. So it's inevitably going to result in a lot of back and forth communication, which is frustrating for both staff and student alike, and will mean it takes longer to get an appointment. So let's have a look at a better email. Subject line. Help with annotated bibliography. Dear Centre of Academic Development, I am a biological anthropology student who is having difficulty putting together an annotated bibliography as I've never had to write one before. I would be grateful for an appointment to discuss this with one of your tutors. I am free on Friday and Monday afternoons and all day on Tuesdays. Any help you can offer is much appreciated. Kind regards, Sarah. Th this is actually a much better example. It might feel a bit weird writing Dear Centre for Academic Development, but it sets a friendly, courteous tone and here the students being really clear about what they need. So I can tell from looking at this email that they need a study skills tutor, not a maths or a stats tutor. And the level of detail also presents an opportunity for me to tell the student about the fact that we already have a page on annotated bibliographies on our website that the student might find useful. And I might also point that student towards related pages on dissertations because you often do an annotated bibliography as part of a dissertation project. The student has also taken the time to give a range of times when they're available and that increases the chance that we'll be able to put them in the slot without lots of back and forth in emails. And it looks to me like they've also proofread the email before they sent it, which is always worth doing. I mean, in my experience, I'm a totally terrible typist and I've saved myself a lot of embarrassments over the years with a quick proofread. Tip number four. Keep the tone professional and respectful. When writing your email, avoid using language that is overly emotive or angry. And also, when writing your email, avoid using block capital letters when trying to emphasize your points. This can make it hard for some people to read these emails. In addition, using block capital letters to emphasize your points 
uh, looks like you're shouting to make your points and if you imagine you're trying to speak to your teacher in person and you're shouting at them to try to get your point across, it might seem like... You get what I'm trying to say. Keep the tone professional and respectful. Tip number five, give people time to reply. Oftentimes when we think about emails, we see it as a form of instant communication. However, we should not expect this. It is common practice to expect a reply within three working days. Of course, if you have not received a reply within three working days, then you can send a follow-up uh, email, but make sure it is polite. Uh, and also avoid sending multiple emails of the same topic. Tip number six, check your emails every day. Here at Oxford Brooks University, emails are one of the most important means of communication between staff and students. Remember, you are able to access your Gmail from any device. So you can access it through the web. And also, if you download the Gmail app onto your phone, you'll be able to log in and access your emails from anywhere. You can find more tips regarding effective emailing linked in the document below this video. Thanks so much for watching. Hugs and kisses, XOXO. No, a little too cutesy, I think. Until we meet again. No. Ah, best wishes, Sarah.